A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, if the wicked man turns away from all the sins he committed, if he keeps all my statutes and does what is right and just, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the crimes he committed shall be remembered against him. He shall live because of the virtue he has practiced. Do I indeed derive any pleasure from the death of the wicked, says the Lord God? Do I not rather rejoice when he turns from his evil way that he may live? And if the virtuous man turns from the path of virtue to do evil, the same kind of abominable things that the wicked man does, can he do this and still live? None of his virtuous deeds shall be remembered, because he has broken faith and committed sin. Because of this he shall die. You say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is indeed because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if the wicked, turning from the wickedness he has committed, does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he turned away from all the sins he committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who could stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who could stand? I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord. More than the sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. If you, Lord, mark iniquities, who could stand? For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. He will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who could stand? Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You've heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you'll be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. 
The gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> One word about the gospel, especially in the light of <clears throat> what seems like a parallel set of statements that we heard on Ash Wednesday coming from the sixth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel from the Sermon on the Mount. Here Jesus says, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, it's very easy when we hear, uh, as we did on Ash Wednesday, don't pray the way the hypocrites do, and don't pr uh, fast the way the hypocrites do, and don't give alms the way the hypocrites do. It's too easy in our minds, especially because of the ending of Matthew's gospel, to make the equation of hypocrites and scribes and Pharisees. But that would be a mistake, okay? Surely some Pharisees and scribes were hypocritical, Guess what? There are some Catholics, can you believe it, that are hypocritical. I know that's a shocking insight, but that's kind of the way it is, okay? But there were tremendously devout uh, uh, Pharisees and scribes as well. And these were people who had a tremendous love for God and a tremendous love for the God's law and wanted to fulfill it to the best of their ability. And yet, Jesus is saying, as good as they are, if you're not better, you're not getting into the kingdom. And so Jesus is explaining and unpacking a higher sense of righteousness. And that's a, that's a scary thing for us. We don't want to point those kinds of fingers, okay? Maybe the better way of translating uh, Matthew chapter 6 would not be so much when you give alms, don't give alms like the hypocrites do, okay? But maybe it would be better to translate it when you give alms, don't give alms like hypocrites do, you hear the difference there, okay? We're not naming any people. We're just saying, hey, there's some that are like this, okay? And the great thing is to make sure that we aren't like this. Now, if you happen to go on the website of the Vatican, what you'll see is that in these last few days, it's been the one-year anniversary since the election of Pope Francis. So you've got a card up there with a nice, simple caption. Do we want to become saints, yes or no? Nice, simple, straightforward question. Do we want to enter the kingdom of heaven? Yes or no? Do we want our righteousness to be even better than some of the best? Yes or no? Let us stand and pray. <clears throat> For the church throughout.